Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The small business sector is accessing and benefiting from government's economic recovery plan. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports has unveiled a new logo. And nurses celebrate their contribution to society. The St. Lucia Development Bank, SLDB, has been disbursing monies to the small business sector to help them mitigate the impacts of COVID-19. The financial support forms part of the government's economic recovery and resilience plan. Hamadi Mark reports. When the government of St. Lucia launched the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan in July 2020, special arrangements were made to repurpose the Climate Adaptation Financing Facility, the CAF, to include a loan grant sub-facility, the Business Recovery Program, which aimed to assist micro, small and medium-sized businesses affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as those battling unavoidable effects of climate change. 2.6 million U.S. dollars remain available under the CAF to help businesses through the Business Recovery Program and to continue its traditional support to businesses, farmers and homeowners in building resilience to climate change. Keegan Myers operates a 4.5-acre farm in the hills of Babano. He specializes in organic produce. In the past year, Mother Nature has assaulted his business on numerous occasions. Climate change has been possibly the most difficult opponent that uh, we've faced in the last couple of years. Um, to combat climate change, I actually embarked on a project to build a climate smart greenhouse. And that was one thing that we did to really try to push the envelope in terms of developing higher yields and better productivity. So last year in particular, we experienced for the first part of the year an extreme drought. And for the latter part of the year, we had an overwhelming amount of torrential rain. With his yields destroyed and his savings drained, a vicious cycle of mitigating the effect of climate change, mayors approached the St. Lucia Development Bank for funding under the CAF. They understood the plan that we were going with, uh, that they understood the risks and they understood what we had in terms of uh, assets to basically back it, back it up. Um, so that process, it took a little time, I'm assuming because it's a farm that has a different business um, model so it took a little bit of finagling to get them to understand it they did and once they once they once they did i think it was a really quick turnaround at the end martin martin operates bamboo springs a natural unpurified water which is sold to hotels and households with the tourism industry in a comatose state due to the covid 19 pandemic his operations were severely impacted our revenue was, um, was dropped about 60% due to COVID. The St. Lucia Development Bank offers the CAF business recovery loans at a starting interest rate of 4.5% with a 15% grant component. I saw out of this and then yes, they, they, they're willing to um, give businesses like mine grants or, or loans as for say, to help them to recover from the COVID. And I thought, hey, look, since I'm in that procurement, I, I suit the criteria for uh, applying for the loan I did. I didn't necessarily have all the time to sit down and constantly do my books and so forth. So to have an institution that actually understands and is willing to work with you, it, it can understand that the value that you bring and can actually bring value in terms of working with you to develop you know, the, your, uh, say, application and, and, and business plan so that you, know, you can go ahead through to get a loan and not just, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have enough and shut you down and not give you the advice. That is, I don't, that is it's profound to actually have that level of support. The CAF Business Recovery Program received technical and financial support from the World Bank, the Climate Change Investment Funds and the European Union through the ACP EU Natural Disaster Risk Reduction Program. From the Government Information Service. I'm Humedi Mark. The government of St. Lucia continues to demonstrate its commitment to keeping the population safe while fighting the coronavirus. As part of St. Lucia's arsenal, the Ministry of Health and Wellness commenced the national vaccination campaign with the aim of adding an increased layer of protection for the citizenry. 
Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatis explained that the government continues to work assiduously to ensure that adequate vaccines are procured. At the start of the campaign, um, of course, we received a generous donation of 25,000 doses of vaccines from the government of India um, in phase one. We also had generous donations from our sister islands in the region. The government of St. Lucia continues to procure vaccines. Uh, we know of the COVAX facility for that mechanism. St. Lucia, of course, um, has received two of the batches, uh, two batches of vaccines amounting to 50,400 doses out of the allocated 74,400 doses from the Fruta COVAX facility. We expect the third batch of vaccines, which is 24,000 doses, um, sometime in early June, either the first or the second week of June. The government of St. Lucia also has procured 100,000 doses of, vac of, of vaccines just to ensure that vaccines is available and is accessible. And that shipment of vaccine we expect um, very soon. The immunization manager noted that the aim is to achieve herd immunity where at least 70% of the population has been fully vaccinated. Our target is to achieve at least 70% um, coverage and we're, we, we're, we have a target of about four, about four months to get to that. I mean, it is very important for us to return to some level of normalcy. And of course, it, won't, it can't just happen this way. We know that public measures such as wearing our masks, keeping our distance, our physical distance, um, ensure, ensuring that we sanitize, this alone is not enough. And it is important that the majority of our population has this level of protection, get vaccinated, have that level of protection that will take us to a point where we can regain some level of normalcy in our lives. The national vaccination campaign was recently bolstered to include mobile and pop-up clinics in high traffic areas where individuals can access to get vaccinated. This, Jabatis stated, was as a result of the slow uptick of the first dose of the vaccine. The Ministry of Health has decided to ramp up its community vaccination outreach and that is to include the mobile pop-up um, vaccination clinics um, that would have commenced um, from last weekend. So from last weekend we are now moving, we, we are actually in addition to our regular vaccination sites um, that are ongoing throughout the weeks these mobile sites will be going into communities. So we actually bring in vaccination to the people. And we're targeting high areas with high traffic, especially on the weekend, the Fridays and the Saturdays. So from last weekend and moving on, we you will be seeing um, these mobile pop-up vaccination clinics at various um, high traffic areas um, across the island. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatiste. The St. Lucia Nurses Association observes Nurses Week with a month-long celebration of the extraordinary work of the nurses. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. Nurses around the island were honored and celebrated for their dedication and commitment to their profession. The St. Lucia Nurses Association recently held a church service and awards ceremony at the Temple of Faith Pentecostal Church, placing focus on how critical nurses are, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. President of the St. Lucia Nurses Association, Alicia Baptiste, thanked the nurses for their efforts to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the world. The way we live, socialize, work, interact with each other, and the way we deliver nursing care 
It has raised the visibility of nurses like never before and underlined that nurses are indispensable to healthcare and the backbone of every health service. Nurses are on the front lines of this pandemic, separated from their loved ones and praised as heroes. But nurses are human. They are not angels or superheroes. They have the same needs and rights as everyone else. Pastor of the Temple of Faith Pentecostal Church, Pastor John Joseph, saluted all the nurses and recognized the invaluable work they continue to do. There are things that I love about nurses. They immense pride in what they do, they work. You love what you do and you believe you are made for this. And this is part of what you are aspiring to be. The parallel between nursing and pastoring only begins here. Our common role is to give care or self-care for others. Nurse Alicia Baptist also made a call to support the courage of the nurses under very challenging situations. Over the past year, nurses had some of the most critical roles and responsibilities during the pandemic. They will continue to be at the front line of healthcare in communities, primary healthcare, and the acute care sector. Nurses have been leaders in ensuring that all patients receive patient-centered and high-quality care. While performing in their roles and responsibility, nurses have sacrificed much, including their physical, mental, and emotional health and even their very lives. International Nurses Week is celebrated under the theme, Nurses, a voice to lead, a vision to future healthcare. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. This is NTN Nightly, stay with us. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça ou ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sale à dans un bécine de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou kachi ou épan. Si toilet bol ou ka kole, ou ni pour mettre ten à di de bac la. Toilet bol la, ka koule, si ou ka wè koule à de bol la avant ou flush li. Un toilet bol ki ka koule, ka gaspille un chai glou. Servi un bon pito en rose pour laver moto ka. Le ou ka lave had, servi de l'eau wèsi a pour ouze fleu. Le ou sauve de l'eau, ou ka bese manye a, ou ka servi tepe ou an man. Sauve de l'eau tout le ou ni an chans. Ek chanje, tout de l'eau e pontan. Ça, c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports has unveiled a new logo. Ryan O'Brien has the details. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports has unveiled its new logo in an effort to create a refreshing new look for the ministry to help in connecting with the youth. The unveiling was done during a brief ceremony held at the ministry's conference room recently. Whilst we continue to use coat of arms for all government agencies, we felt it necessary to bring the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Against this backdrop, we threw out a challenge to our young people, and they responded well, and the tail is behind us. Um, we, we received more than 70 logos and then the prize winners were chosen. The Minister for Youth Development and Sports said their logo was brought to Cabinet and embraced with open arms. The logo will appear on all our literature, our shirts, our caps, you name it, in all print and digital media, including the website, all of our social media platforms, and all functions associated with this, with this ministry. It is certainly a brand new day for us at this ministry, and we are happy to share it with you. This logo now gives us instant recognition as it allows us to stand out from the crowd. The logo focuses heavily on portraying togetherness and patriotism, as highlighted in the use of the national colors. The trophy in the logo 
represents sports and winning. The blue circular shape adds aesthetic appeal and serves the purpose of keeping our youth together. It shows the importance of working together to ensure the improvement and continued development of the youth as the young people continue to fly the flag of St. Lucia with pride and dignity. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. On Tuesday, May 19, 2021, Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gil Rigabat, chaired a meeting with representatives of the Department of Education and the Ambassador of France's Excellency Jacques Henry Yules and Madame Christelle Outreman, Regional Councillor for Cooperation. The minister reminded the meeting that among other endeavors in 2018, a delegation visited Guadeloupe to discuss ways of managing the troubling sargassum seaweed issue. She also praised the delegation for the replast OECS project, primarily funded by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, aimed at tackling the problem of single-use plastics. Where education is concerned, Dr. Rigobert pointed out that St. Lucia has benefited from a number of exchange programs to Martinique involving physical education and French teachers and students alike. According to P.S. Michel Charles, this initiative has exposed the potential for the St. Lucia Sports Academy to attract students from the French territories. With respect to the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, Dr. Keith Nurse spoke of the twinning of the college with sister institutions in Martinique with an emphasis on hospitality training and culinary arts. The School of Agriculture at the college, he says, also presented opportunities for students from Guadeloupe and Martinique to come over to St. Lucia to study our agriculture practices while learning English as a subject.